Another top-level quarterback is off the board for the class of 2022. This time, a few days ago, Cade Klubnik committing to the University of Clemson, and we have to talk about it. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from y'all. So hop down to the comments and give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Do you believe that Clemson will be able to work their way into the top five recruiting classes this year? And let me know why or why not. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way you don't miss any of my uploads because I do constant college football content player reviews, film analysis, talk style videos like this, and I'm on my push to 5,000 subscribers within my first year of having a channel, and I'd love to have you along for the journey. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like and comment down below because that does go a long ways in helping content creators like myself get picked up by the YouTube algorithm. But with all that being said, let's talk about Cade Klubnik and why I like this commitment so much. And it's pretty interesting for a few reasons. And first and foremost, we just talked the other day about how there was going to be a battle to the very end for five-star signal caller Ty Simpson. Now, Ty Simpson was the number one or two quarterback on Clemson and Alabama's board. I'm not sure whether either of them ever had Quinn Ewers as number one, considering that he's been pretty much well locked up between both Texas and Ohio State for the majority of his process. However, that doesn't stop Alabama from trying to flip you at all. However, let's not make any mistake. Nobody's mad that if you don't get Quinn Ewers, you end up pulling a Ty Simpson. That's an awesome awesome quarterback to have in your class and Tide fans everywhere are ecstatic and as ecstatic as can be no doubt at all. But the interesting thing is is that like I just said Ty Simpson was the quarterback for Clemson in this class. That was who they were going after as well. And as the day came where Ty Simpson was announcing, we had a feeling that it was really in between Clemson, Alabama and a long shot for Tennessee. Um, had Tennessee not been going through so many sanctions, maybe they're in a better place, maybe they have some continuity, maybe we're talking a different story, but at the end of the day, it's very hard to argue against the Alabama Crimson Tide acquiring yet another five-star, this time five-star signal caller, Ty Simpson. However, it did not take Clemson long to f go out and find their guy, because just a day or two later, Cade Klubnik is on board the 2022 Clemson class. And look, Cade Klubnik is rated as a four-star, but any other year, he could easily be a five-star. This is a very deep quarterback class when you look at the names provided and how talented they are. We're talking about an individual who played in one of the hardest divisions in all of high school football in all of the nation. For his state title championship, he had to go through Galena Park North Shore, which Denver Harris's team, we've talked about Galena Park North Shore at length on this channel, and then he had to go through Quinn Ewers and South Lake Carroll, all to win a state championship and be the MVP, or the offensive MVP at least, of said state championship game. And in his junior conquest, Cade Klubnik is a guy that threw for 3,495 yards. He had 500 yards rushing, and something really interesting about him when you watch his film, you can tell he's a really athletic guy, but he's actually really deceptively, really deceptively athletic. He clocked in a 51 second, 400 meter dash. That's not bad when you look at a guy of his stature. This is an individual who was able to make things happen during the state game on his legs. I mean, whenever South Lake Carroll had things wrapped up on the secondary, he'd just take off and make them pay. And that really helped lead Westlake into a victory in that state game. Now, one of the things that is incredibly important to realize about Cade Klubnik is he really just hopped on the scene his junior year. This could be a kid that sees a rise. I don't know that he'll rise to five-star because like I just said, the five-star signal callers in this class are plentiful and they are loaded, but if there was a quarterback who could make a five-star jump, it could be Cade Klubnik for a few different reasons. Like I just said, one, he plays in a hyper- hyper-competitive high school environment, and even then, he was standing out amongst that environment, throwing for 3,495 yards, so basically 3,500 yards, 68% completion percentage, 35 touchdowns, 500 yards rushing, and oh yeah, by the way, even though he only really came onto his scene his junior year, he has the lowest interception percentage of any quarterback rated by 24-7 sports as a three-star or higher. He throws an interception once out of every 117 attempts. That's really good numbers at the high school level. And I think that goes to two things. One, coaching, which is also why I think that Cade Klubnik could be a guy to see a rise. 
He's coached by Todd Dodge. His son, Riley Dodge, actually coaches Quinn Ewers at South Lake Carroll. Very deep coaching family, known for sending guys on, not necessarily even the coaching family. I mean, they do as well. But the high school programs we're talking about are known for sending guys to college football and those guys being successful. And so when I look at Clemson missing out on Ty Simpson, it is a great year in recruiting because of the depth of this recruiting class. And we've seen this over the past few years in some of these recruiting classes where there is so much depth. If you don't get your guy, your number two guy is not necessarily a consolation prize. No, I'll put it like this. Unless you have a five-star signal caller, you'd take Cade Klubnik in your class. And even the teams that have a five-star signal caller, if he was interested in joining in in your class, you'd take him. Because he is a good quarterback. He has got a lot of growth ahead of him. Because like I said, only played his junior year in any meaningful capacity. He got some reps his sophomore season, but the bulk of his production came in his junior year. And knowing that he played in such a stringent, stringent high school league, knowing how hyper-productive he was within that high school league, taking out a team such as North Shore en route to a state championship in which you took down South Lake Carroll and Quinn Ewers, the number one, not only quarterback in the nation, but player in in the nation. And I was at that game. I got to sit there and watch the whole thing live because I was working for, or I was interning, I should say, for Dave Campbell's at the time. And I got to help do these state championship games, got to watch the whole thing. Quinn is the real deal. But Cade Klubnik is a guy who was hyper exciting in that game. And he is one guy who I will absolutely be taking the time to go and watch play this fall because I think he's going to be a really interesting prospect to watch. And this is one of those situations where the Alabama Crimson Tide is ecstatic that they got their guy, but Clemson is sitting there feeling pretty good, even though they didn't get their guy to be able to pull a Cade Klubnik. But I suppose that that is what happens when you are in Alabama or a Clemson. You might miss on your guy, but your consolation is still 99% of college football's best case scenario. That's it. I can't wait to hear what y'all say. Be sure to comment down below, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next one.